Hey TikTok, it's your girl Janelle Renee and I am the founder of Redefining Her Ministries. And you may be saying, what is Redefining Her Ministries? We define that her ministries is a ministry that the Lord gave me to create um, to restore his daughters. Simple as that, right? To restore his daughters, to walk in their true worth, to understand their true value and the virtue that he has put in you, right? So you can walk and be the woman of God that he called you to be, regardless of where you come from, regardless of how you start. It's not how you start, it's your finish, right? And so he gave me this mandate to simply restore his daughters. And I do that through many different avenues. But today, I really want to come on here to encourage but also pray for a lot of my sisters and even just you know the people of God um, because it has just come to my attention here in over the past week or so that so many people are in um, suffering right and we know suffering is it's not strange right it's not strange even to the people of God because Jesus told us that we will have trial and tribulation in this life and so that's sometimes just a part of the journey however you know I it was something about you know the back the back the back um you know, requests and prayer requests that I've been, you know, coming across or just, you know, um, stories of people's life and where they are in this moment that it just didn't sit well with me, right? It just began to grieve my spirit. And I said, Lord, why? What, what is this? These are children of God. These are your sons and your daughters. What is this? We serve the God of God, the Lord of Lords. We serve Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He shall provide all of our needs according to his glorious riches, right? In Christ Jesus. And so because I know that, and because yes i do know that sometimes we just mismanage our resources right sometimes we just have to be honest and take responsibility and say we just have mismanaged right maybe we're not you know um budgeting maybe we are overspending maybe we're living beyond our means whatever maybe because we've been not been taught you know hosea talks about for my people perish for lack of knowledge and and then it goes on to say that because they rejected knowledge that they were being rejected by the, by god but when you don't have knowledge then sometimes that just makes you ignorant which just means that you don't have you don't have a, the knowledge of something it don't make you you know illiterate or like you're unintelligent it's just saying you you don't know right you just don't know and when you don't know when you don't have the certain foundation foundational principles it's hard to build right the bible tells us that um um, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? So sometimes our foundation is faulty because we, we, you know, we weren't taught how to manage our finances. We weren't taught how to budget. We weren't taught how to value a dollar. We weren't taught the, the about money being a tool, right? We weren't taught about respecting money and how to have a, a, a fruitful and healthy relationship with money, right? We weren't taught about, you know, investing. We weren't talk, taught about interest rates and you know, and compound interest and, you know, high earning savings accounts and, you know, market money accounts and, you know, all of these other things, right? We weren't taught about, you know, how to protect our finances. We weren't taught about, you know, trust and LLCs and things that we can put in place. We weren't taught about, you know, investing and, you know, the stock market and, you know, all of these things, right? Sometimes we just don't have the, um, we don't have the proper foundation. And so you can be righteous. You can have a right heart. You can desire to do well. You can want to do well but if the foundation be faulty what can the righteous do so sometimes it's generational sometimes you just you know come from a generation where it's just been cycles of poverty for whatever reason someone and down in the bloodline they opened the door you know whether they you know did something you know they were greedy you know maybe they did something you know fraudulent the, the bible talks about you know gaining you know riches and wealth by fraud right and different things and so when you when you do unethical things when you do um things Things that are considered um, that are immoral and um, that are not right to gain money you know a lot of times we don't recognize that that impacts not just us it may not impact us but it will absolutely impact our our future generations that's why the bible tells us that the righteous man steps is, or, is ordered by the lord and he leaves an inheritance for his children's children's children if your steps are ordered by the lord but what happens if your steps not ordered by the lord you still gonna leave an inheritance but it's about what are you leaving 
So there's so many reasons why. And sometimes it's an attack, right? Sometimes the enemy is just attacking your finances because maybe you have an anointing on your life. Maybe a word has been spoken where you're going to be a kingdom financer. Maybe you're going to be someone who is destined to be very wealthy. And so what the enemy will try to come do, he'll try to counteract that with, you know, causing you to get into financial crises and causing things to fall apart in your finances and causing, you know, you to go through different um, financial challenges and it will create doubt in you. It will create unbelief then you will begin to be hopeless and discouraged and you you will no longer you know have the you know the faith to be steadfast on the word that God spoke to you sometimes the enemy just is coming in to kill still and destroy whatever the reason amen whether we're not managing our money well we, we we weren't taught the right principles concerning money the bible has a lot to say about money right god definitely is concerned about how we are stewards we are called to be good stewards um and so maybe you just didn't have the the, the right um the right uh, principles and foundation maybe it's generational maybe you know for some reason somewhere in your bloodline maybe a few generations back you know somebody did something they begin to gain wealth or riches they had a lust for you know and a greed for for money you know the bible talks about how we cannot serve both god and mammon right that it's the love of money that's the root of all evil not money in and of itself right money is good because if you have money you can build if you have money you can sow you can give right if you have money you know that there's a lot of you know things that are afforded to you not just material things but sometimes people who have money have more of a voice because people will listen to you because you have money you have status and so money is, is something that is necessary but it's when you love money so much that you're willing to kill for it you're willing to steal you're willing to do anything you're willing to you know tear someone else down step on somebody do something you know underhanded just to gain it that's when it becomes a problem and sometimes it's not you Sometimes somebody else in the bloodline, someone else in the family, sometimes it's been a parent, a grandparent, you know, someone else who opened the door to allow this the, the generational curse of poverty to be on the bloodline. And what needs to happen is so now you have to rise up and you have to, number one, go and pray and ask God, well, what is the root of this? What is the root of my circumstances? Like, why am I here? How did I get here? Is is this just was a part of my journey? Is you allowing this because, you know, this is just a part of my testimony? Is it generational? Did I just make poor decisions, you know, and did, and lack knowledge? Like, how did I get here? And then ask God for the antidote, for the answer of how to move forward in your circumstances. Wherever you are in your life today, in your finances, you could be facing a crisis. You can be facing shut off notices, evictions, repossessions, right? You could be facing not even having a place to live, not having a place to say, don't even know where you're going today. It is all temporary. It is all temporary. And I want to pray for you. I just want to pray a simple prayer because I just feel led that it's probably more people who are suffering in silence, right? There are probably more people who are going through, but they don't vocalize it and they don't ask for help. And so you don't, one thing you can do always is ask our God because he said that he's our present help in our time of trouble. So I just want to come and pray with you um, and pray for you and just pray that God will meet your need today. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I am praying for these, your children, Lord God. Only you know the depth of our circumstances and situation. You know, Father God, every hair on our head. And you know the root cause of why we are going through these different trials and tribulations and financial crises and why we're facing all of this affliction concerning finances, God. But it does not matter because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us from them all. David cried out to you in the Psalms and he said, this poor man cried out and you answered me and you heard me the Lord cried out and he and he delivered I cried out to the Lord and he delivered me from all my troubles so I just stand right now in the gap and intercede make an intercession on behalf of these your sons and daughters and I cry out to you Father God and I say help us oh God I say Father God take notice of our circumstances and our distresses oh God if we are guilty Lord God if the guilt is coming because we have we have just been unwise with with the resources and the things and the provision that you have provided for us Lord we repent we repent for mismanaging what you have given us. We repent for, for idolizing my money. We repent, Lord God, for, for not, you know, taking our money and budgeting and putting um, principles and things in place so we can be good stewards over what you have given us. 
we repent, Lord God, for not seeking knowledge, hallelujah, for not seeking understanding and how to manage it, Lord God. We repent, Lord God, for wanting to have just more and more things and just being lustful and greedy for things, oh God. We repent, Lord God, for wanting things more than we want you. So we come to you today, Lord God, with a heart of penitence, Lord God, just humbly, Lord God, asking for you to help us. Give us what we need in the moment. Lord God, the immediate needs we need right now today are finances, Lord God. We are needing provision. We need provision to pour in from the north, south, east, and the west. We need you to put our names on people's hearts. We need you, Lord God, to raise, to, to raise people up to, to come pour into our bosom, oh God. We need you, Lord God, to provide in supernatural ways, oh God, that you will begin to show yourself strong and mighty in our lives as Jehovah Jireh. That we don't have to go and need anything and that all we need is you. That you are our source and our strength. And that as we cry out to you, oh God, asking you, Lord God, to help our circumstances, to take notice of us, your prayer maid service and man servants, oh God. To see, Lord God, the, the, the desperation, to hear the desperation of our cry in the name of Jesus. That Jesus, like blind Bartimaeus, is blind, blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on our families. Have mercy on our children. Have mercy on our circumstances. Lord God, I pray that you will put favor on our heart, favor on the hearts of men toward us, oh God. That we will have favor with God and man. That whoever need housing, Lord God, that we will gain housing. Housing. Whoever needs employment, Lord God, that we'll gain employment. Whoever needs clients for their businesses or contract for their businesses, oh God, that you will send them, oh God. For whoever is in need of whatever, the, the, the finances to pay the bill, to, to prevent the shutoff, to prevent the repossession, to prevent, you know, the 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 the, 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 the situation from falling apart, to, to get the repair on the car, to provide for the clothing for the children, to put food on the table, whatever it is, God, that every need shall be supplied. I am praying, Lord God, that you are moving supernatural ways for all each and every one of us. I pray, Lord God, for those who are in need of finances for medical bills and medical treatment, Lord God, that you will pour out liberally. I pray, Lord God, that every need that is before you, no matter how big or small, Lord God, that you will be intentional to provide it, Lord God, in such a way that we know that it was you, that you shall be glorified, that you deserve all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord God, and that we can continue, Lord God, to stand on the firm foundation of your word that is true, that you are not leaving nor forsaking us, that you are ever present in our help in our time of trouble, that you are with us and you are for us and if God be for us then who can be against us that all we need is for you to look in our direction all we need is for you to Lord God blow on our circumstances all we need Lord God is you to take whatever the five the two fish and five loaves or the widow's might that we may have and multiply it oh God give us concepts ideas give us ingenuity and creativity help us Lord God not to be bound up in fear Lord God when we have gifts and we have talents among it within us that we just have not tapped into or are afraid or insecure and don't think we're good enough. I pray against the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus that wants to paralyze your people, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I pray that we begin to rise up bold as the Lion of Judah, that we will walk boldly in the things of God, that we will be strong and courageous and not be afraid, knowing that the Lord thy God is with us everywhere that we go. And so I thank you, Lord God, that you are here, that you are nigh, that you are a God who hears, you know, and you see. You're the all-powerful I am that I am. You're El Shaddai, God Almighty, and there is nothing difficult for, too difficult for you. So I pray, Lord God, that every person that watches this, this video, that listen to this prayer, Lord God, that it's not me that they hear, that they have an encounter with Jesus. I pray that it is your voice that they hear speaking and that they begin to be empowered and encouraged that they believe. I pray that you resuscitate our faith and reactivate our belief in you to know that you you are able you are able to do anything but fail and i decree and declare that wealth and riches are in our house and i decree and declare that we lack no good thing and i decree and declare that we're blessed in the city blessed in the field blessed in our going out and blessed in our coming in i decree and declare that everything that we do prospers and everything our hand touches is blessed because we serve the almighty god and nothing is impossible and so i thank you for all of these things i glorify you and i extol you i exalt your name on high in Jesus' name, amen.